What's going on, smart people? If you like how I present things in this video and you think you might be interested in some physics or math tutoring, I offer Skype tutoring. Click on the link in the description for more information. That's it. That's the sales pitch. Let's move on. Last year, it was all... Andrew, do more classical mechanics videos. Andrew, you're doing too much quantum mechanics. Well, are you tired of it yet? Because I'm bringing you another classical mechanics videos, ladies and gentlemen. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to derive the Hamiltonian from the Lagrangian. A few videos ago, I went over how to convert between the two, assuming that you already knew this relationship, which was a bad idea. I should have derived it first. So that's what we're going to do. In that video, we assumed that the Hamiltonian could be written h is equal to the generalized velocity times the generalized momentum minus the Lagrangian that depends on some generalized coordinate, its velocity, and maybe some explicit time dependence. And this is what we're setting out to find today. We're going to make some assumptions afterwards and show that under those assumptions, the Hamiltonian can be written as the sum of the kinetic and the potential energy. Let's get started, you guys. So assuming this is what our Lagrangian depends on, what I want to do first is I want to take the total time derivative of it. Okay, so it's going to have th these position, these coordinates, and these uh, velocities might have some implicit time dependence, meaning the Lagrangian will depend on q, which also depends on t. It can depend on q dot, which also depends on t, while also having some explicit time dependence. For example, I could say that L could equal, you know, one half m q dot squared t minus some potential that depends on q or something like that. In which case, these two q dot and this q might depend on t, but we also see the t popping up explicitly which means that when we want to take the total time derivative of L dL dt, we're going to need to use partial derivative chain rule. So the first thing that we're going to have to do is take the derivative of q. So it's going to be dL dq dq dt plus dL dq dot dq dot dt, and this is the chain rule from whenever you have a function that you're taking the derivative of where this is also parameterized. The thing that you're taking the derivative with respect to is also parameterized by that variable. And then when you have the explicit time dependence, then we can just differentiate it explicitly, dl dt. Now these are different quantities. This is the total time derivative, this is a partial. These are not the same thing. Uh, what might be helpful now to do is write down the Euler-Lagrange equation because we're going to exploit it a little bit. So we know that the total time derivative of the derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to the generalized velocity is equal to the derivative of the Lagrangian with respect. Oops, that's not a dot. That is not a dot. That's a coordinate. F equals m a. The time derivative of the momentum is equal to the force. Cool. And when we look over here, right over now, dl dq pops up. So what I want to do now is I want to substitute really the euler lagrange equation in for this term right now. Okay? And when we do that, that says that this is equal to d dt dl dq dot. Well, dq dt is just q dot plus dl dq dot dq dot dt is just q double dot, right? It's the second time derivative of the generalized coordinate plus dl dt. Cool, that looks disgusting. Uh, one thing to notice though is we have a time derivative of this part here. We have a second time derivative of this times the original. This just looks like the expanded side of product rule. Right, so this whole thing can be written as the time derivative of q dot times dl dq dot. Right, if we were to expand this out, this would be q double dot dl dq dot plus d dt dl dq dot uh, q dot. Assuming that the derivative stops here. Okay, so let's go ahead and now we're going to substitute this bad boy into, no we're not, we're going to substitute this littler bad boy into this meow. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that and we get, uh, let's go ahead and write everything out. So we get dl d 
dt is equal to now this um, this uh, product rule here, d dt of q dot dl dq dot, but this is then added to dl dt. Perfect. Starting to get a little bit more compact again. The next thing I want to do is I want to subtract this total derivative over to the right hand side. So that tells us that well, zero is equal to d dt times q dot dl dq dot minus, oh, this is a total derivative, dl dt plus dl dt. These are not the same derivative. You can't just cancel them out. Okay. But since these both are total time derivatives, we can factor out that time derivative and write that d dt of q dot dl dq dot. If we factor out the d dt here, this is just a minus l plus dl dt is equal to zero. dl dq dot, that's just the generalized momentum. So what we get here is we get d dt of q dot p minus l plus dl dt is equal to zero. And we call this little fella the Hamiltonian. Awesome. And what this tells us is that there's no explicit time dependence in the Lagrangian, meaning if dl dt equals zero, well then that's not there. And we get that the time derivative of the Hamiltonian is zero, which tells you that under that circumstance, the Hamiltonian is conserved because it's constant, which is pretty cool. But let's see how the hell this comes into or how this relates to h equals t plus v. Well, first we've got to make some assumptions. Let's assume that we're dealing with a conservative force. No liberal forces here. Uh, and if we can do that, then that means that we can express the kinetic energy of the form 1 half m q dot squared. In other words, if we want to construct a Lagrangian, in general, it'll have the form L is equal to 1 half m q dot squared minus some potential that we're not going to really make any assumptions about. We'll assume it depends on q. And now what I want to do is let's see what q dot times dl dq dot is. Well, dl dq dot, it's just power rule. It's just going to give us an mq dot. So really what it's going to give us is an mq dot squared. That's what this term here is, right? It's q dot times mq dot, that's mq dot squared, minus our Lagrangian. And our Lagrangian is minus 1 half m q dot squared minus minus our potential, which is plus v of q. 1 minus a half is a half, so that gives us 1 half m q dot squared plus our potential is equal to h. In other words, t plus v is equal to the Hamiltonian. Bye. Just kidding. I think that the classical mechanics videos, if I keep going like this, might start to get a little bit old. So let me know in the comments section if you want me to keep doing this or if you want me to switch to a different subject. If you think that I should switch to a different subject, then let me know in the comment section below or else I'll throw this cat um, gently onto the floor.